Hi, this is Brother Richard, and today we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokus Mystery. This will be part 295. And our topic today is the seed of the serpent. We wish to discuss the principle of the serpent seed. Scripture teaches conflict would arise between the race of the prototokus called the seed of the woman and the races under Lucifer's control called the seed of the serpent. Turn to Genesis the third chapter verse 15. And as we pursue this from a scriptural perspective, I believe we're going to see some eye-opening uh, truths that the scripture is presenting to us. <coughs> now, of course, the background here deals with the fall of man in the garden as a result of coming under Luciferian the Luciferian influence and uh, <coughs> YHVH is <coughs> speaking about the consequences that all are going to experience as a result of this catastrophe. And in verse 15 we read, and I will put enmity where enmity is strife, antagonism, it's referring to conflict between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. Now what we find is <coughs> number one its future. It says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. So we want to define basically when this takes place. The scripture lets us know <clears throat> it culminates, reaches its climax during the tribulation period. So in the first part, which says, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, turn to Revelation, the 12th chapter. <coughs> and we will look at verse 13. Revelation 12, verse 13. And when the dragon saw, well, we know who the dragon is. It's the serpent. When the dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. I'll put enmity between thee and the woman. This is the climax of the enmity. So this is when this prophecy reaches its full fullness, if you will. And it went on to say, in between thy seed and her seed. Now, this is brought forth, same chapter. Revelation 12, verse 17. And the dragon was wroth with the woman, 
and went to make war with the remnant of her seed, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. <coughs> so we see the climax of what's spoken in Genesis 3rd chapter, verse 15, take place at the time of the tribulation period, where the tribulation period is reaching its climax, fulfillment, conclusion. At this point, the enmity reaches its climax, fulfillment, conclusion, and the events taking place at that time. Yes, sir. Okay. It says, He went to make war with the remnant of her seed, mm -hmm. the left behind Christians. Yes. Yes. Okay, so now. Who keep, who keep the commandments of Jesus Christ. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ which is the prophecy. Well, this talking here about, yes, that's true. But it's talking not about those who are glorified. It's talking about the remnant who are left behind. Right. It's talking about a lower level. He can't touch the ones that are glorified. He tried, didn't work out. So those with the testimony, he can't touch. No. No. But are we not understanding the war to be between the Prototokos who make the rapture and come for the enemy, as opposed to all those who were born again, which is how it will be taken? Yes. And let me take you back to Genesis uh, 3.15. People will see Eve in their minds, that's the woman, and therefore they're talking about the entire Adamic race, which of course is... They, the get, they get the whole thing. <clears throat> we, we know where, in, the, in this genre where that comes from. Yes. Misinterpretation of Scripture. Amen. Scripture taken out of context. <clears throat> First and foremost, the woman can't possibly be Eve because it takes place in the tribulation period. Right. In which case, Eve is long dead. Sure. And secondly, <clears throat> the Adamic race cannot fight against the, no. uh, the enemy. No. It has nothing to do with... <clears throat> The enmity is not to do with the Adamic race mm. and the other races. We're going to find out, focus what that what that is from a scriptural perspective. We just want to lay out the details so we see the individuals that it is referring to. This brings us to this that the next principle. <coughs> Scripture teaches <coughs> currently. The serpent and his seed are afflicting the human race through which the Prototokos sons must come. This is achieved by the Luciferians raising up tyrants in evil systems which keep the human race in bondage and darkness. Now, <clears throat> The, the scripture in Genesis, the third chapter, verse 15, is not referring to the affliction being perpetrated on the human race. It's referring to conflict between two groups, the seed of the woman and the seed of the serpent. There is no conflict between the human race and the seed of the serpent. It is a one-sided affliction that has taken place from the time of the fall to the time in which the creation is going to be freed from the serpent seed. Since the serpent seed were taken to be the tear families, that's correct? Yes. We should really be looking at this as predestinated group, Prosopicus, seeing at that time the Tear families. That's the way we are going to look at it. So that, in other words, the war had already been, um, what's the word, considered and laid down before the Adamic period. Certainly. So, so in other words, when we see it in Genesis 3.15, that's not the first time we're hearing of it, is, is, is the point. 
if you were a predestinated pro-choice. Yeah, but basically what's being said is this is the time where it starts. Sure. <coughs> it's set in motion at this no, time. Not, okay. And what we're looking at here, we want to establish this. What is the prophecy saying? It's talking about a war that's going to take place which will result, it shall bruise thy head, thou shalt bruise his heel. He's going to be defeated. <coughs> the human race is never <coughs> in a position to even comp contemplate, understand what's happening to it, sure. let alone war against sure. the seed of the exactly. serpent. Yes. They're too busy trying to remain ignorant of what they're experiencing. Having said that, we can now be free to go on to discuss <coughs> the defining of the seed of the serpent. <coughs> we said the serpent seed are races of intelligences called nations, they are not Adamic, which Lucifer dominated before the creation of the human race. Turn to Ezekiel 31, verse 6. fowls of heaven made their nest in his boughs. Under his branches did all the beasts of the field bring forth their young. Under his shadow dwelt all great nations. It's talking about the time when Lucifer was a vice regent over the secondary creation. He influenced <coughs> he directed the life of the nations of the creation since they all were under his wing under his influence although they had separate <coughs> rulers his influence outshone everybody everybody flowed under his dominion yes he's not talking about humans there no no we so, said so no. he's developing he's influencing nations of angels not angels, secondary beings. Okay. Well, we said this is before the, the Adamic race is entered into. We're looking at the seed of the serpent, the races that came under Lucifer's influence during the Luciferian period, which were totally and thoroughly corrupted by his influence. So that by the time of the human races bringing forth these individuals were totally corrupted. That's why you're going to have <coughs> them being liberated <coughs> by the elder group, the kings, who will rule them with a rod of iron. Mm -hmm. But that's, we don't want to get off into that. Right just a quick a question. Yeah. So should we understand therefore that whilst Lucifer in, uh, corrupted all of these uh, nations, these physical beings, mm -hmm. When he continues to do that to humans, the nations who are now corrupt and are considered what the terrible of the of the world, or however you want to describe, are also influencing humans in a similar manner. Sure. So there are a, a number of levels of influence going on at, at any given time. Sure. Right. Sure. You can see that now. The principalities. Then you've got individual spirits, right. elementals. Everything affects the human mind. And that's why the human race is wiped out spiritually. Well, let's go on. <clears throat> Scripture teaches, currently, the serpent and his seed are afflicting the human race. Through which the prototokus sons must come. 
This is achieved by Luciferians raising up tyrants and evil systems which keep the human race in bondage and darkness. Psalms 82, verse 2 to 5. How long will you judge unjustly? and accept the persons of the wicked, Selah. Defend the poor and fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hand of the wicked. They know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. So he's complaining, <coughs> these are the guys <coughs> who took over when the principalities under Lucifer fell, and they continued to do the same thing that the former masters, lords of the creation did. <clears throat> when the human race came on the scene, they were overthrown. They were basically corrupted thoroughly. Lucifer was the one driving force behind this because he knew out of the human race the prototokos would come. And if the prototokos were allowed to proceed, that he would be defeated. So he pulled out all stops to keep that from happening. That's why we live in the world we live in today. At what point does Lucifer understand who or what the prototokos are? He'll never understand who or what they are because it's so far above him, but he understands. <clears throat> he heard YHVH uh, speak the prophecy. Okay. They're going to wipe you right. out. Okay. Okay. He knows, number one, they're more powerful than he is. Mm -hmm. He's going to find that out when he tries to stop him at the time of the rapture. <clears throat> he understands that they're coming through the Adamic race. Yes. Okay. Yes. And they're not the everyday Adamic person. He understands those two things. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, he understands it perfectly. Mm -hmm. That's why from the beginning, you have had the seed of the serpent incorporated in the life of the human race. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at how some examples of how this came about. Did you have a comment? Okay. Jesus spoke frequently about this condition, but of course they didn't understand what he was saying. Turn to Matthew 13, we want verse 24 to 30. Matthew 13, what? 24 to 30. This is a parable. Another parable putting forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. While men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. And when the blade was sprung up, brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said to him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go in and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. They both grow together until the harvest, at the time of the harvest, I will say to the I will say to the reapers, gather you together first the tares and bind them in bund bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Then he goes on to explain the significance of the parable. Turn to 
verse 36. We're going to read verse 36 to 40. <clears throat> then Jesus sent the multitudes away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said unto them, He that sowed the good seed is the son of man. <coughs> Elder brother, Prototokos. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. Prototokos. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The nations of Lucifer. Serpent seed. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is at the end of the world. The reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be at the end of the world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. They shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend, and them which do iniquity, and shall cast them into a furnace of fire. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. So what he's saying here... <coughs> Intermingled in the human race are tares. Tares look human, they act human, they talk human, they walk human. They can be uh, basically fooled into believing that they're human. But they have distinct characteristics that Jesus brings forth. Now, it brings us to the next principle. Scripture teaches Jesus often confronted the tares and called them out. Turn to John, the 8th chapter. We're going to read verses 37 to 44. John 8, 37 to 44. <coughs> Jesus immediately describes them as not being genuinely human. Verse 37. I know that you're Abraham's seed. They've incarnated into the human race. But you seek to kill me because my word hath no place in you. He's not accusing them of rejecting his word. He's accusing them of not being able to receive his word. Okay. Why? So, continue on. I speak that which I have seen with my father, and ye do that which you have seen with your father. Remember what we've been looking at in Ezekiel. Lucifer dominated the nations throughout the Luciferian period of his re reign over the secondary creation. He influenced them for who knows how long, thousands of years, corrupting them to his design, to his, function the way he wanted. They became solidly inculcated in his influence. Just like the sons of God are drawn to the Father through the Father's influence, there is a union, a connection, so it is with Lucifer and the tares. Notice what he goes on to say. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said unto them, If ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. But now ye seek to kill me, a man that hath told you the truth, which I have heard of God. This did not Abraham. Ye do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, We be not born of fornication. We have one father, even God. Jesus said unto them, If God were your father, ye would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. Why do ye not understand my speech? Even because ye cannot hear my word. 
Why? They're programmed by Lucifer. Ye are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father ye will do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and abode not in truth, because there was no truth in him. When he speaketh, <coughs> when he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of it. Because I tell you the truth, you believe me not. So he's saying you are not capable of understanding the truth because you have been programmed by Lucifer to reject the truth. Just like the human race is programmed to reject the truth of the scripture, only and, and the only way they'll receive it is if they research it for themselves and they have the, the foundation that has been built on them destroyed, then they can receive truth. They have to get through the programming from this world system and the Luciferian convoluted word that they believe is the truth of God. Yes. Was there one converter? Did one tear you mean? Yes. No. That it one converter. Never been. No. See, I was one of the lesson I was studying today. You had mentioned, well, so if they if they knew that thus and so was going to happen, would they, you know, would they discontinue in their ways? And he says, no, because they're all under the influence. So the whole thing is, even with, <laughs> with the facts being presented, they cannot decide to take advantage of the facts, the truth. You just said what Jesus said. You will not come to me that you might receive eternal life. So the question I was going to ask before was, we know that of these two families, one or two appear to break away. I use that word advisedly, they appear to break away. The Eisenhower girl, the one who was talking about uh, super soldiers and so you, you've seen it. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Okay. Since she is able to break away, as in not embrace what the bloodline has given her, this, could she receive Christ? I would say she's not a tear. She's an Adamic. Does this Born into the tear family. So then there are Adamics in the tear family. Sure. They're not exclusively tears. Sure. Okay. That sure. changes things. Over. Right. That explains yeah. why. They, they're not... Okay, well, the Adamic has not been programmed the way the tear has been programmed mm -hmm. throughout the millennia to reject God and the things of God. Truth of God. So we should understand then that the tears, the individual tears, are those who which, I, I, I guess I can only say it as, Lucifer has chosen to receive his tear spirit. Lucifer will not allow them to incarnate. Mm -hmm. If he was any doubt in his mind that they could re, 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 return to, him. to uh, or be open to receive the truth. We just read it here. He says... Uh, you are of your father. You can't hear my word. The only way they could hear the word is if they sovereignly will to reject their program in which they will not. So how do we account for the Adamics born into the Tear families? Incarnation. Why does he allow Adamics in his Tear bloodline? It's a system of where spirits are drawn into the human race. Okay. Now we don't know, but everything's corrupted. Mm. So we don't know. I believe it's like a, a tunnel where you have spirits coming down from different places incarnating into the human. Lucifer or, organized, the first man born was a tear. Yes. Um, we're going to take a look at some examples of that. <clears throat> Scripture teaches the main characteristic of a tear is their hatred for Adamic man and for the things of God. Turn to 1 John, 3rd chapter, verse 12. Not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, and telling you he's a tear. 
and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. Tares cannot do righteous works. <clears throat> the evil tree, Jesus talked about it, an evil tree can't bring forth good fruit. Mm. We should also understand that if the Lord <coughs> chooses, if he chose, he could incarnate um, the line of Seth, if he wanted to, into a tear family bloodline. No, he won't. It corrupt the line. Why would he do that? We're talking about the Eisenhower girl. Yeah. Who you said is an Adamic. Yeah. The implication is that the Lord did not allow her to be a full on Tear family bloodline. Well, what happens by the basic nature an Adamic had to be would have to be so corrupted to accept that type of evil. Okay. He would lose his own characteristic. Right. Uh, <clears throat> coming into that situation would be so repugnant to an Adamic, mm -hmm. he'd have to get out. Okay. There's, there's, there's that, and then there's she hasn't. She's not the end of her course. No, that's that part's true. But from her behavior and the things that she said, it's very clear that she doesn't want to be anywhere near these people. Yeah, she would. She would die first, yeah. which is the point that he's just made. Yeah. Now, we said that the characteristic of a tear is somebody that hates the human race, and they hate God and the things of God, and they do everything they can to obliterate the things of God. Klaus Schwab is a tear. Oh. George Soros is a tear. Joe Biden is a tear. Look at their fruits. Do they do anything that's genuinely helping people? No. Bill Gates. It's a tear. This world is under the aegis of tears. Anybody that would buy into a program <clears throat> where you wipe out three quarters of the human race mm -hmm. Is a tear. Yeah. When you look at the people who run this world, world leaders, captains of industry, various businessmen, so on and so forth, it's probably easier to say, point out who is not a tear than it is to list yes. the tears. Yes. <coughs> uh, it, this world has been run by tears since the beginning. Mm. Uh, the uh, the um, guys who. Uh, Robert Barons, Rockefeller, mm -hmm. Astors, all of them, they're all tears. Sure. <coughs> what about Trump? He looks like an Adamic in a tear family, because he has the... Yeah, the I, would, I would say he, yeah. Would you agree? I would agree, yeah. yeah. Adamic in a tear family? Yeah, in yes. a, a tear bloodline, absolutely. Yes. When you look at his, his uh, parents, his grandparents and so on, these are clearly tears, clearly. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, George Bush, tear. That whole, that whole, the whole, the whole Bush. The yeah. Yeah. Genre, they're tears. Turn to Matthew 21, uh, 25. And we're going to see, we just read the prophecy, at the end of the age, <clears throat> the tears are going to be separated from the Adamics. And they're going to ju be judged. Matthew 25, 31 to 33 is how we'll start off. <coughs> when the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall they sit upon the throne of His glory. Before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth the sheep from the goats. He shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. The sheep are the Adamics, the goats are the tares. Drop down to, we're going to read verses 41 to 46. <coughs> Matthew 
Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was unhungered, ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, ye took me not in. Naked, ye clothed me not. Sick and in prison, ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee in hunger and a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall they answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you did it not unto the one of the least of these, you did it not to me. A sign of a tear is he will not have compassion on a human being. He will be delighted to see him suffer. He will not take the things of God genuinely and respect them. He will uh, 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 try to corrupt them. He will try to deny them. He'll put them aside. He will have nothing to do genuinely with the people of the human race or the things of God. Hitler was a tear. Stalin was a tear. Mao Zedong was a tear. They killed millions of people cold-bloodedly and did nothing to advance to advance the stature of the human race in all the time that they existed. The people that are running the world today are tares. The, the reason that you're having the things happening in society today, it's not an accident, it's determined. People are determined to be starved to death. You're not going to be allowed to have a garden to grow food. Not going to be allowed to have a house to live in. Not going to be allowed. Klaus Schwab said it. You're going to have nothing. You'd be happy. And you'd be happy with it. That is a tear agenda. And we see here the result. He said at the end of the, at the end of the age, the angels would gather them together, and <clears throat> they would be separated from the wheat, and the tares would be brought into furnace of fire. What he says. Um, these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. Throughout the scripture, <clears throat> you see the human race dominated, afflicted by tyrants. They're all tares. Or turncoat Adamics that sell out mm -hmm. for power. You can't, you can't exclude them either. They will take on the attributes of a tear for their own aggrandizement. That sounds like Adam Schiff. Yeah, among others. There's a whole shiftiness about him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, you look at Esau. Esau was a tear. Most of the evil kings of Israel and Judah were tares. They wouldn't have anything to do with YHVH were the things of YHVH. They wanted power. They wanted um, to build their realms on the backs and the suffering of their people. That's the uh, calling card of a tear. The Clintons are tears. The elitists that are running this thing are all tears. They have do not have the interest of the people at heart at all whatsoever. Well, the world families. Yeah. And as a result of that, you're going to get the beginning of sorrows. The yeah. tares are going to engineer the destruction of the Adamic order. When do the tear families realize for the first time they've been hoodwinked, they've been lied to, and they're going to die just like every other Adamic person? They don't. Turn to, uh, answer that question, though. Turn to Isaiah 14. Mm, they don't. <laughs> No, they don't. They don't. They're not programmed to objective evaluation. They're programmed. Their emotion is, emotions are, all constructed within them to be satanic, right. Luciferian. Now, what's going to happen at the end of the judgment? Is God is going to. <coughs> destroy 
the tear lines, the blood lines. They will never again be allowed to incarnate into the human race after this run of the tribulation period ends. Mm -hmm. So in the millennial period when the earth is being brought forth abundantly, <coughs> the human race is, is multiplying, no tear will ever incarnate again into humanity. There's, that, there's a verse which says something along the lines of um, let not their cities ever be yeah, we're again. gonna. That's here in Isaiah that's, 14. That's the tears we're talking about. Yes, right. okay. it's Isaiah 14, okay. which we're gonna read. Verse, verse 18. All the kings of the nations, even all of them, lie in glory. Every one of them in his own house. So when the Luciferians are thrown back down into the subterranean estates, they're gonna be basically under house arrest until the time of their judgment. Lucifer won't. He's going to be thrown to the bottom of the bottomless pit. Verse 19. But thou art cast out of thy grave like an abominable branch and as the remnant of those the remnant of those that are slain thrust through with a sword that go down to the stones of the pit as a carcass trodden underfoot. He is going to be the lowest of the low in his punishment. Verse 20. Thou shalt not be joined with them in burial, because thou hast destroyed thy land and slain thy people. The seed of evildoers shall never be renowned. In other words, <coughs> the seed of the serpent. This is a judgment on all of them. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, now fill the face of the world with cities. It's your bloodline <coughs> dominating the current world system through the mercantile. So the mercantile system, the metropolis, is the key <coughs> that runs the engine of this current order. <coughs> uh, of, of industry, commerce, banking, that's what runs this world's yes. system. This is going to be destroyed. It's perpetually given into the hand of the descendants of the tear, tear lines. So should we understand that the back end of the tribulation is when the tear bloodlines begin to realize, I don't know if that's the best word to use, that it's been taken away from them. Well, I don't know if it's about realization. <clears throat> what will happen is they're going to remain trying to hold on to what they have until the bitter end. Mm. They're just going to go down holding on what they, right, down. Yeah, what they have. That's the program to do. Uh, so they have no insight into anything? No. No, no depth of comprehension? No. no. Mm. You can't... Can you, can you have a, a, a conversation with a, a person who's neurotic? No, of course not. A person who's been programmed to be a psychotic, mm. um, somebody who is a um, Manchurian candidate, no, they're programmed. Right, they're going to act right. the way that they have been instilled sure. to function. That's a great term, the Manchurian candidate. That, that explains exactly who they are. Yeah. It's a great description. Yeah. <clears throat> and so the, God has allowed this because of the stupidity of the human race. Mm. And the human race is going to be destroyed at their hand. And then, of course, the regular Luciferians are going to take center stage and uh, you're going to have this thing progress until the tribulation period and then at the end of the tribulation period it will all get wiped out and uh, <clears throat> the prototokos will reign supreme over everything. No, we don't think he's a tear. We think he's an Adamic. In a tear, in a tear, in a tear background, yeah. yes. He comes out of the tear... <clears throat> uh, system. He is one. Uh, he's equal with them, but he's not a natural tear. If he were, he would not be <clears throat> doing the things he does. He is a, a nationalist. He's mm. for America. Mm. The tears are for the global, yes. the globalist agenda, and that's why they hate him because the things that he does show them up for what they are. Right. And they're trying to do everything they can 
to 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 uh, to, uh, to um, cut him uh, out from power. Right. <clears throat> no, we don't think he's a tear. How did he get out of the tear part of his family then? How did he what? How did he escape from? To a decision that he made. He has money, he has influence, he has his own organization. And uh, just like uh, you have other people, uh, Kennedy came out of a tear background. But he tried to do the right thing and they killed him for it. Because of his endemic nature. Yeah. yeah. You have people. Um, what she saying? Reagan. Reagan. Oh. Yeah, I think I don't think he was a tear either. You have people that are Adamic that are born into tear families. Mm -hmm. Put it that way. Do you think Trump is a Christian? Uh I think he believes he's a Christian. But Trump has had Heretical teachers all around him. Well, the white. Yeah, yeah, all of them, mm. basically. So pray for him that he that he will become born again. I think he thinks he's a Christian, but he's he's <clears throat> he's been raised. He's been given heretical teaching. I believe that's why he lost the election. Mm. There's no righteous Christians around him. There are all these guys that come out of the faith movement and uh, distorted doctrines, and they isolated him from true uh, 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 Christian leadership. Yeah.